But I thought these pieces of our history and, and uh, ancestors mm -hmm. would be real important to kickstart mm -hmm. our conversation. Yeah. You go back to the great, 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 great <laughs> grandmother. grandmother. And she was born in what, 1830s? 1830. 1830. Yeah. So we have from 1830 About to 1830. About 1830. Yeah, that's what they did back then. Yeah. 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 You guys remember, with with my great-great-grandfather, Frank Caldwell. So he served as a Buffalo soldier in the 9th and 10th Cavalry. Those were the first Cavalries. Most slaves, if they had the opportunity to enlist uh, in the Buffalo soldiers, they did, because it was, you know, they're trying to escape slavery. Yeah. But the conditions as a Buffalo soldier were very, it was deplorable. I mean, they, it was really bad, you know, the conditions. My great-grandfather, uh, Richard Hester, he knew Dr. Martin Luther King Sr. And I have a picture of him, the two of them together here. This is where he received his doctorate. And he was very instrumental in, um, in like voting, because during that time there were poll tax. Black people were too poor to pay this tax. So, you know, they didn't get to vote going after, you know, what you want, what you think is right and fairness, equality, all of those sorts of things. I mean, they're, you know, themes that I see and I've seen, you know, even looking back in my life. The resilience, tenacity, you know, against all odds. And, and it was hard as parents to watch you struggle, but it made you better men. But that's what resiliency is. It's just when you go through struggles, you have that, you call it tenacity. Um, you have that um, understanding of, of, of what it takes to bounce back. You know, you know that whatever you're going through is not, that's not the end of the road. That's not final. It's just yeah. a, it's part of that process. Uh, right. That's important. That history goes far back. I can only go back to my grandfather, really. And whenever there were elections, any kind of uh, political events, dad was the one who, who kind of led the charge. He had a fourth grade education and he learned to read by reading the Bible and this was his Bible. And he brought the Head Start program to the community that we lived in. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I think I was in first grade, but my younger sisters were the first to go to a Head Start or a preschool preschool, pre-first grade. Can you imagine going to first grade having not had any formal kind of learning how to read or write or anything? Yeah. And then that's, yeah, that's kind of what we were faced with growing up. Just hearing you talk about this, I feel like I know because I see the commonality of what has been brought from, like at least has to be brought from him, from granddad to you, which you guys instilled in me and Jordan. You know, for me, it's, it's, it's important to know our past. It's extremely important to not live in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it's more important for us to use the past to help leverage our future. It's a, it's a gift to be able to share it. Um, it reminds me of just the whole Bible, when the whole Bible has a common thread from Old Testament to New Testament mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. And so as I'm able to share with you ancestors, you can see this common thread of this huge legacy that connects you to the past mm -hmm. and that hopefully plants in you uh, and motivates you, encourage you to keep making a difference.